I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your ears to hear what God has to say to you. So we're going to sing our song that says, nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Do you believe that nothing is impossible with the Lord? So lift your voices, let's sing. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in the Lord. Come on, lift your hands and let's sing it. Nothing is impossible. It's impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible. It's impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Oh, hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon His Word. For everything, all oh, everything, yes, everything. Possible with God. Come on, let's sing it one more time in faith. Nothing is impossible. It's impossible when you put your trust in. Come on, do you believe that nothing is impossible? It's impossible when you're trusting in His word. Hearken to the voice of the Lord of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon His word. For come on, lift your hands and declare it. Oh, come on, lift your hands in faith. Everything is possible. Give the Lord a shout of praise and let's welcome our pastor, Bishop Dag. He what Mills. Come on, give God praise. Wonderful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word that is changing our lives. We're so blessed to be here today. Lead us by your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for guiding us. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be here today? I'm also excited to be here. How many enjoy the variegated fasting? Did you fast? Three days. By the grace. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Well, that was just the beginning of variegated fasting. Variegated means marked by variety. Different kinds of fasting and different kinds of prayer. Amen. Um, today I want to um, share with you something very important. Our theme for the year is uh, seed time and harvest. So in line with that, I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 8 and we're reading verse 20. I'm going to talk about a particular seed today. So Genesis 8 verse 20, Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. All right? Verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. All right? And then verse 22 says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Amen. Now notice verse 20. Notice verse 20. 
Noah built an altar and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Now remember that Noah had come out of the ark, right? And remember that whilst Noah was in the ark, okay, he was allowed to go in with two animals each, two by two. So the main thing in the world was a shortage of human beings and a shortage of animals, okay? Then out of this, okay, he took um, of every clean fowl and clean beast, okay? So he took some of the animals and offered them as burnt offerings, Okay, so he was sowing a seed. You know, sometimes when people sow seeds, you always think that, oh, they have a lot. That's why they are giving. And that's one of the reasons why sometimes we don't give gifts. Because the gift sometimes often sends a wrong message to the person who is receiving the gift. That, oh, hey, this man has a lot of money. For, for him to be able to do this, he has a lot of money. That is why. So sometimes you don't even give what you want to give for that reason. Lest you should have wrong ideas. But anyway, Noah sowed a special seed and made a special sacrifice to the Lord. Now this sacrifice provoked the Lord. Now notice verse 21. Okay, and the Lord smelled the sweet savor. Now, a smell is a very nonverbal communication. It's a nonverbal communication. Smell is nonverbal communication. If you smell something bad, you feel negative and you negatively feel like going away. Like this, and I don't know how we know that this must be bad. Even poopoo, when you smell, there are types <laughs> of smells. Variegated smells. Yes, and if you are experienced, you will know this person is not well. <laughs> For this smell, this person is not well. <laughs> Do you understand the message I am sharing with you? Yes. But I don't know how it, 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 it's, not, it's not even that you go and um, smell different poopoos. Excuse me, I don't know what other word to use. This one, this is the smell. This one, this is the smell. This one, this is the smell. Then you've learned it. No one ever has a learning time for these things. But it, it has a way of telling you there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And there are some smells that are just negative. And there are some smells that are positive. All right? Now, the Lord smelled the savor. And I just want you to know that there are many things that are not verbal. Or they are not verbally communicated. But they are communications. And one of the things is your sacrifice and your um, seeds. They have a nonverbal communication with them. Do you see? The Lord smelled something in heaven. And the, what he smelled was a good smell. And the Lord said in his heart, 
I will not curse the ground. So this brought an end to the curse. A non-verbal communication. So, you know, somebody may say, oh, sorry. Or somebody may say nothing. Or somebody may just make no comment. Or just say something small. Or somebody may talk a lot. But there is a non-verbal part to your communication. And God senses it. And when you are more and more experienced, you can gradually get to know this person is actually some way. This person is actually insulting me. Uh, this person is, is actually saying that, what did they say? They say I should bring offering. Or they say this. They say that. And so I have brought it. You know, so you must be very careful when it comes to your communication to God because God is seeing all that we are saying without saying it with words. Yeah. And that communication was able to end a case. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Now, I hope you are hearing me. In verse 22, he gave a principle. And the principle was that as long as this earth remains. Now, when you say while the earth remaineth, in science, they say things like this star was formed at this time, it exploded, it will not be there. In fact, some of the stars we see are not there. That's what we are told. Because when you see a star, those of you who uh, know about stars, if you take some of the stars, they are as far as 650 million light or 650 light years away. Which means that when you say a light year, if you say something is four light years away, the nearest star is four light years away. And that means that the light you see from the star is what the star was producing four years ago and it has taken four years to come to your eye at the speed of light. So that's what it means when you say a light year. It means that was that four years ago. So if you see something that is a thousand light years away, it means that it was a thousand years ago. That is in the year, uh, what is thousand years ago? 1922, the year 1022, that the blink, okay, blink, blink, like that, and you are now seeing it, okay? So between the thousand years ago when the light came, it may have exploded and disappeared. So it may not even be there. I hope you are understanding what I'm saying. All right. So the main point that I want you to uh, say is this scripture it says that while the earth remaineth because the, a time can come when the earth will not be there but it says as long as the earth is there it hasn't been dissolved okay seed and harvest seed time and harvest it will not stop and anybody who plants a seed will have a harvest because it, that cycle will not be interrupted. The cycle of cold and heat will not be interrupted. The cycle of summer and winter will not be interrupted. And then day and night, day followed by night, followed by day, followed by night, followed by day, followed by night. It will not stop. When day comes, night will come. When night comes, day will come. When day comes... When seed time comes, harvest time will come. When harvest time comes, seed time will come. And when seed time comes, harvest time will come. That cycle will not stop. All right. So seed and sowing seeds and reaping is your life. This whole life is made up of sowing seeds which you harvest from as time goes by. 
Are you with me? All right. So there are many, many seeds you can sow. And um, you can sow seeds of your flesh. Seeds into your flesh. Uh, He that soweth to his flesh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 says, he soweth to his flesh. So if you like, maybe a more modern word is investment. We make an investment in the flesh. Yeah, we make an investment in the flesh. Like maybe you are developing sexual skills. Do you see? You're making an investment in the flesh. Or you are investing in sex, sex, or in in drinking. You are investing into your body with alcohol. A lot of people drink alcohol. Alcohol is drunk, I think, and I understand why they must drink. I think it makes people happy when they drink. They become happier. And then they also forget the realities of life. Is this the reason why people drink? We should ask who? Who should we ask in the church? All right. So, um, an investment in the flesh. Now, out of sowing the seed... In the flesh, you reap corruption. The harvest is corruption, spoiling. Okay. Now, I'll give you an example. Cigarette smoking is also an investment in the flesh. You do something, you put it into your flesh and alcohol. Now, if you go somewhere where they are checking your, let's say your heart, they will ask you for five things. Do you see? I'm not going to tell you all the five things, but they, 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 they check your weight. Your weight. Your weight versus your height. If it's your heart. They ask about exercise. Okay. I, I can give you the five if you like. They will ask your weight. Find out your weight. Weight and your height. Then they find out about exercise. And then they find out about, um, what was the third one? Your blood pressure. Okay. And then the last two are alcohol, whether you drink. And then the last one is whether you smoke. Five. Always. So, if you smoke and if you drink, do you see, it affects many, many, many diseases. Many, many, many diseases. So if you don't drink and you don't smoke, already two things are helping you. We are yet to come to your height, I say your weight, exercise, and then your blood pressure. In terms of your heart, your heart's health. Are you listening? Or you want to leave? Yes. Okay. So when... The Bible says that he that soweth to the flesh will reap corruption. You must see that it's like these things that we put into us, you know, they actually corrupt. Corrupt is an old word for spoil. It's spoiled. And you know, when something is spoiled, corruption is not, it's not possible to reverse. It's only possible to stop. Or freeze. But you, you can't, like meat. When meat is spoiled, you can only stop the spoiling by putting it in the freezer. But you can't reverse the spoiling. Do you, do you see the difference? Yeah. So you have to be careful. Some of the things we put into the flesh, you can't reverse them. And they affect sometimes. Sometimes you can stop it, but you can't reverse it. If, for instance, you have been tuned to sexual perversions, you understand what I mean by sexual perversions? Yeah, it's more acceptable to say sexual perversions. So if you have been tuned to sexual perversions, you can stop 
but usually you can't reverse it because the flesh has learned something. That's what the flesh knows. Yes. If you haven't spoiled your flesh, you spoil the flesh, you spoil your body. If you are a girl and you spoil your body, you become spoiled. You become what? Spoiled. <laughs> and you can tell a spoiled girl and a non spoiled girl. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can, you can, you can, yes. The communication is like non verbal. Non verbal. You can sort of. You can sort of smell something. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes. All right. Now, you can also sow a seed of money. Yes. And reap it. In fact, in the Bible, money is not called money. It's called a seed. All right? So, these are all, and the Bible is saying that as long as this earth is here, seed and harvest will not stop. Whatever a man sows, whatever, the, the Bible says, whatever a man sows, whatever you sow, you reap it. I mean, this is a law. Whatever, whenever, how much, however, whatever you sow, you will reap it. So it's very important. Now, today I want to talk about a special seed. How many want me to talk about this special seed? And I'm going to show you this special seed. It's just one thing, one seed. And this particular seed, I'm going to help you to see the effect of sowing such a seed in your life. The effect of sowing such a seed in your life. How many want to know which seed this is? And I will explain to you why this seed has that effect. Okay? How many are wondering what this seed is? <laughs> what the seed is, this particular seed. Okay. This seed is what I call the seed of a camp. Yes. The seed of a camp. Yes. The seed of a camp. Yes. Yes, what a seed. When you invest or sow the seed of a camp into your life, it has 10 specific effects in your life. Yes. <laughs> All right. Because it is very, very important that you realize. Now, what is a camp? A camp is a time are the universities on strike? Yes. Mm. Okay. A camp is a season, a time where you block out. Are you listening? Yes. You block out other things and attend to only one thing, which is God and his word and his work. You just block off everything. Now, there are people who look at our church and ask, how do you have, um, you know, we have seven different cathedrals in Liberia. The bishop in charge of Liberia was telling me yesterday that this year he's building, he's going to build, um, he's going to increase the number of towns, cities in Liberia where we have 
cathedrals to 12 this year, only in Liberia. Oh, yes. Yes. With pastors and missionaries. Yes, there. Now, the question that you ask is, people don't realize that over the years, a very special and unique seed has been sown into people's lives and people have sown that seed in their lives because it's both you sowing a seed and a seed being sown in you. Yes. And that is the seed of a camp. And the reason a camp, people don't understand how, what, what, what do you mean by camp and why a camp? What people don't realize is that a camp is as far as the east from the west and as far as from day is from night. It's like a church service and a camp. Yes, that's how different it is. And as far as the east is from the west, it's different between a convention and a camp meeting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And many, many don't realize the value of that seed that is sowed into themselves. So I'm going to break it down for you to understand. It's just a short uh, Bible study and uh, we'll be on our way. Number one, it is a seed of time. 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 You, you sow time to God. You give time to God. You have time for God. Many people don't have time for God. Churches don't have time for God. People don't have time for... We have time? Do we have time for a lot of things? A lot of time for a lot of things. But time for God. People don't have time. Now, I sowed seven years of my life into medical school. Seven good years, from 1982 to 1989. Seven quality years. Eh? That's a lot of time. Best years of my life. I was, I think, I was a teenager when I went to medical school. And I went all the way through till I finished in 1989. I never repeated, never failed any exam. It's the school that closed the strike you are having. We also had one from 1983, 7th May, till the next year, March 1984. So welcome. Almost a full year. Yes. So when you use the word Dr. Heward Mills by my name, it's not from an email. We have email doctors. And it is not um, honorary, it's not an honorary doctorate. It's, it's a doctor. Do you see, of a bachelor of medicine, a bachelor of surgery, that's the meaning of the degree, MBCHB. But MB is bachelor of medicine, CH is the Latin for chirurgy, surgery. Surgery. So MBCHB, yeah. It's not an email, I had to receive an email. And it's not an honorary degree from an American school, American university or a university in China or any, any university. It's from the seed that I sowed. Seven years of my best life. And, and the time that you sow 
also matters. You see, yesterday I saw some children, they have just been born. There were two of them. They've just been born. Now, as I look at them, and I said, for them to be 11 years old, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't even look long before they'll be 11 years old. But for me at my age to be 11 years means I'll be 70. <laughs> Yeah. So the 11 years for them is different from my 11 years. Yeah. Yes. They, they can easily be 11. Can you cross and cross 11 years? <laughs> they are different. So the quality of the years that I gave, I was a teenager and I entered the school. And I gave my quality time, not my evenings, not my weekends, but that whole period, I sowed a seed of time. And a camp is a seed where all of us are together, we have nothing, and that is why we don't allow people to come and go. Those who come in the evening bring the spirit of, you are not so important. And I'm bringing, I'm coming to Mark Register. Or you are blessed, I'm here. And that's a convention. And the convention is bless me. I'm here for blessing. Fully. I hope you are seeing the difference. Yes. The seed of a camp. Isaiah 40. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, do you see, shall renew their strength, and they mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So they that wait upon the Lord renew their strength. So I became a new person by going to medical school. I, that's a doctor. I, re, I was renewed. That is why many people become ministers of the gospel in our church by going to camps. Most people who are in the ministry can point to a particular camp. From that time, they, they, they entered into ministry. Most, most people that are in the ministry can point to a particular camp. That, that was the end of everything. I said, I want to serve the Lord. Most people can point to something. Yeah. You are renewed. You become a new person. You become a new person. They shall renew their strength. They mount up. So I went higher than I was. Most people go higher when they wait on the Lord or when they have time for the Lord. Oh yes, the seed of a camp. Even if it's your own private camp with God, it's a seed. It's a seed of time. Even in my own small world, when I see people who have time to wait, it touches me. And I say, oh wow. You waited all this time. And that is why the first love church, do you see, enjoying, we enjoy a certain enjoyment when we are not time conscious. And when we are not, we have to start, we have to end, and all those things which is the commonest thing you have in the churches. And that is controlled. The spirit is controlled by people who have no time for God. I want to finish with you by 8 o'clock, 6 to 8, early service. I'm done. My Sunday is free. I've marked register. I've done everything. You know, one of the things I don't like is seeing people at mark your register level. You, you see that they are not there from their hearts. 
Because we have things we do to mark register and things we do not to mark register. But because I love to do it. People have marital quarrels because they say, you don't have time for me. Especially Western couples. You don't have time. Oh, yes. There are certain things that are more from the West. Oh, yes. <laughs> but they don't have time for me. You don't have time for this. You don't have time. I mean, the local wives here in Ghana, I mean, they are carrying firewood. They are going to the market. They are cooking. There's nothing like you don't have time for me. You know, attention. I need some time. I need that. It's a Western thing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You never hear certain things. And even um, when it comes to certain diseases, it's, it's a Western thing. We have a, a problem called um, hyperemesis gravidarum. <laughs> hyperemesis gravidarum. Hyperemesis means excessive vomiting. From pregnant in pregnancy, in early pregnancy, like I get so sick. Now that disease, hyperemesis gravidarum, is a Western. We have it here too, but it was there, and we never saw it here. But gradually, as we are becoming Westernized, <laughs> it started to appear here. Where a woman becomes pregnant, and she can vomit as she is dying or she's almost dead. You have to put on a drip and everything to save to help her. Oh yes. It's like breast cancer. You never had breast cancer in the villages. But as the, mo- the woman, we never had it in Africa. But as the African woman became more urbanized and westernized, then it started to appear. And so you ask yourself, what in the urbanization and the westernization leads to that? You're just thinking. Are you with me? So, you don't have time for me. God also has that for us. You don't have time for me. You don't have time for me, eh? But God is saying that that seed where you have time for him, where he is important, Those who have ever sowed that seed in themselves, they are changed forever. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't know what it is, but it's a seed of time. And it is there. First Kings chapter 19. So he departed, verse 19, from thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with yoke, 12 yoke of oxen, and with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, I pray thee, let me kiss my father and my mother, and I will follow you. And he said unto him, Go back, for what have I done? to thee. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave to the people and they they did eat. And he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Amen. Amen. Elisha was a busy man. He was a plowing man. God doesn't anoint lazy bones. Elisha had a good job. Elisha was not an unemployed 
person looking for the church to provide him an alternative source of employment. Then suddenly, Elijah comes along and throws the mantle. Again, it's nonverbal communication. Nonverbal. He didn't say, God has called you. He didn't say, follow me. It was a nonverbal communication which you are supposed to get like the sweet smelling savor. This mantle of Elijah has been thrown on me. The man who killed 400 prophets of Baal and who called fire from heaven has thrown his mantle on me. Does it mean anything? And you still don't know what it means. Stop lying. People pass by each other and they know without speaking a word that I want you to have sex with me. They know it. Nonverbal. Oh, yes. A brother once said to me, I know every girl who wants to sleep with me by nonverbal communication. <laughs> because I was asking him, How do you meet such people? Where do you meet these people? He said, oh, I just know. I see that they know and I know. (laughs) Elisha spent, according to the history, over 20 years following Elijah. Yeah. And had to invest his time following this man. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's how he became Elisha. There's a lady in Accra. She has one of the big churches. And one day at the airport, I was with Archbishop Ida Hosa. And this lady was there with him. You know how he met her and took her to his school. And she worked with him, trained her. She was, I think, a receptionist at the hotel where he stayed. He came for a crusade in Accra. I'm not sure of the details, that's why I don't want to even mention names. But she was, I think, the receptionist or she was something there. And he came to that hotel and said, come to the school. She left all and followed and went, yeah. Yes. <laughs> One time I was invited to South Africa. She invested her life. And that's how today she has the ministry that she has. One time I was in South Africa. And I was preaching in this church, which was being pastored by a Kenyan. A Kenyan pastor. And he had a big church. So I asked him, where, where did you train? How, how did you become? He said, Idahosa. Yeah. He said, years ago, Idahosa came to uh, he came to the to Kenya or wherever and told him you get it come so he left everything and went there and he said when he went he put him in his house you see that was his house it's like a hotel. It was like a hotel. He said he has 36 bedrooms, which is a bit bigger than ma- many hotels. <laughs> oh, yes. He told me I was there in the house when Archbishop Peter Hosa died. He said we were upstairs. Then we heard the cry and it was like, he had died. So he said after he, he died they didn't know what to do with him because he knew him and he came there but it was like <laughs> he was in no man's land and he was there but that, he was there because 
he asked him to come and that's why he was living there. You see, but that's how he became a minister. Because he invested quality time. You get it? Quality what? Time. time. He invested quality time in ministry. Yeah. So the seed of a camp, do you see, is a seed where you give quality time. That's why everybody here must be at the camp. We're having a camp next week from Tuesday. This Tuesday. And the camp is entitled Unox in the Palace. Yes. Eunuchs in the palace. Yes. And you must be there. And you must invest in yourself. And invest in a camp into yourself. With your presence. Not that you are on the phone. You are busy. You see, God sees me. I tell you, anybody that is near me, if I want to mention of things one to hundred, something that I hate is people that are in my presence on the phone. I hate it. I mean, I hate it with a passion. It's not a mild hatred. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a livid... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Because why, 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 why are you on your phone here? What, what I, what, what I, what, why should you be here when I'm with you? And we are, you're on the phone. What, what, what is the point? What is the point? I saw a picture once of some people who had gone to visit grandma. Have you seen that picture? Oh, put that picture on the screen if you got it. They went to visit grandma. The whole family went to, <laughs> because grandma was lonely <laughs> to have some time with grandma when you get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Are you here or you are leaving? I'm explaining the seed of a camp. That a seed of a camp is a seed of time. When you sit with me to talk with me and your hand is like this, you are not there. You are elsewhere. You are in the screen. That is why people go places and they don't know the places and they don't see the places because their eyes are on the phone throughout. They don't even see where they are. If you are sitting in the church, I'm preaching and you're on your phone is the height of insolence, pride, arrogance, and I don't know what you are doing here. If you are sitting by somebody who is on the phone, tell the person, this is what? Insolence, pride, arrogance, and I don't know what you are doing here. minutes where you can give undivided attention you don't have 30 minutes where you can give undivided attention to the word of God or to preaching a sermon something that is important is being said you have no time you have to check this check that forward a video you are forwarding videos and making comments and wishing people happy birthdays. Aha, uh-huh, this is it. They came to visit grandma. Look at it. They came to visit grandma to keep her company because grandma was all alone and grandma was lonely. Look at the picture. Grandma doesn't know what is happening. (laughs) 
Grandma is looking around. Grandma, can you see? Grandma is bewildered. She's alone. She's still alone. Everybody. Do you see? Why are they there? Grandma is even more lonely and more bewildered at what is happening. Oh, yes. Hmm? How many can see the picture? Look. Look at the guy in the white shirt. The guy, the first guy on the left with the white shirt. He there, Charlie. He's rested crying. He's checking his whatsapps look at the lady in the black she there she's also wishing somebody happy birthday the guy in the blue is also he's playing a game this one is talking to a friend this one all instagram amazing okay Let us be careful, amen, Amen. when it comes to dealing with God. A seed of undivided attention and time. When people enter relationships, and if you are a brother, you have to know, you have to give time. You spend time. But you see, and really what you say is that it's not something you, you will be told. Like naturally, if truly you like the person, you want to go there. So they notice, they notice that you are not doing it naturally. And it's becoming a beast. Yeah. Why are you not doing it naturally? Because what you really like, you have time for it. But you have no time for me. Isaiah 64 and verse 4. Isaiah 64. Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee. What he has prepared for him that waiteth for him. Amen. What God has prepared for somebody who can wait for God. Undivided attention and time. Sometimes I see ashes. You see, they'll be going here. Come in here. You see somebody be doing so, so the person's on the phone, checking this. I say, hello, my friend. The church, eh? Have you heard that song, Take My Life? I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving a lot and working in. That's my story. The song that she sang, I fell in love with God. That's my story. It's my song. I wrote the songs. I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. You say you are an usher, you are going here, you are doing this, you are doing this, you are doing this. I said, Look at it. Look at it. Before you don't take care, you are Thomas. Before you don't take care, you are Judas. Yes, we've all been in the church before. Now you make yourself so busy. You are not at certain meetings. You are not at certain meetings. You have no time for this. And you see, the same person has time for funeral, has time to travel, has time for this, has time for that. What you see as important. I'm not talking about attending church on Sunday. No, 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 no. As far as this, there's a song, as far as the east is from the west. That's the song. As far as the east is from the west, it's a Sunday service to a camp. Number two. Huh. The seed of a camp. <laughs> is the seed of humility. You see, it is 
a seed of humility. You are sowing a seed of humbleness. When people say, oh, I'm going for a conference. We have a three-day meeting in Barbados. Wow. I have a three-day meeting in, uh, I'll be going to Dubai, from Dubai to Tokyo, from Tokyo to, to Copenhagen, from Copenhagen to New York, and then I'll back through Cairo, and I'll be in Accra. Wow. It, it sounds fantastic, and it's like you have time for that. But time for a camp meeting where you sit in Mampong or any other place. That sounds, doesn't sound like I'm, I'll be going through Tokyo to Copenhagen to Madrid, from Madrid to, and I'll pass through Cairo on my way to Accra. Yes. And I think, I'm not so sure when I'm coming from Cairo, I'll ask the private jet to stop in Dakar. And then I'll, 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 I'll come here. The seed of humility. There are certain people, when you even see them at a, at a, at a meeting, everybody will say, hey, the person is very humble. Oh. So does he come here? Does he do this? Does he do this? So, so. The person is very humble. Because you are seen as someone who is above certain things. Which is not a good picture. The seed of a camp is the seed of humility. That is why you see certain people have become missionaries, have become people that we are proud of in different nations of the world. Our church is a missionary sending church. We send missionaries. We send to nations. We send to nations. We send young people to nations all the time. From Ghana to here, from here to here, from here to here, all the time. That is the nature of the church. And we have no apologies for that. Oh, yes. That's why our church is not just four square in Accra. Here, 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 here. One big, one big building in Accra. No. We are always sending people. From here to here, from here to here, from here to here. And sometimes from there to there. We send. I send. I send. <laughs> Some people don't want to say that. I send. I send. And I'll always send. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I teach my bishops to send. Send thing. Jesus said, as my father has sent me, the way they sent me, I'm also sending you. As my father sent me, so send I to Now it is people who humble themselves to be at camp meetings who can even, who become something great. James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. That is why people who attend camp meetings are lifted up. Oh yes. People who attend camp meetings, they are lifted up. People who attend camp meetings are lifted up. You see, because I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in it. I've been doing it for years. Yes, sir. yes and yes and yes and yes. The Makana is full of the messages I've preached all over the world. Different camp meetings. Don't worry about the heat. I'm sure this thing will work by next week. Yeah. When it works, we may close the door and all those who are late will be outside. Luke 14 and verse 11. 
Whosoever, whosoever exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And as Derek Prince said, whosoever, whenever, wherever, when you exalt yourself, you'll be brought down. And when you humble yourself, you'll be brought up. You know, one day, I went to Korea. And for Yonggi Cho's um, church growth conference, which I, for, of which I was a board member. Then, from Korea, I think I had to go to Russia or somewhere. From Korea, I was going to Russia. No, Korea is near Russia. And I was going to Ukraine. So, I had to leave on a particular day. You know, now, the next year, I was planning again because I was going. And the Holy Spirit told me, don't plan anything when you are going to Korea. You are proud. Go to Korea and sit there humbly from the day one to the last day, to the end of the last day. From the beginning of day one to the end of the last day, sit down and be, whatever they do, do it. If they say lunch, go. If they say meeting, sit there. Oh yes, he told me. And he told me that he will die and you will not have anywhere to go. And I don't have anywhere to go. Stop arranging prideful programs. When I have arranged somebody greater than you to speak to you and to bless you through him, all the things that I, I see in my ministry. Oh, yes. A ministry now. All over the world. Yes. Stop arranging prideful programs to interrupt. You come late on the first day. You leave early. You, all those things, they are signs of a proud person. He told me that it's a sign of a proud person. Stop it. Go before and be there on the first day and leave after the last session on the last day. Stupid. And stop arranging pride-filled, prideful programs for yourself. I, I'm busy. I know when you go this or what they are talking about, they'll say this, and after they'll say this, and they'll do this, and I'll come at this time because I know everything about whatever. You don't know how. That's, that's why I started my message by telling you that Noah presented a sacrifice and he brought a snail, which is a very non-verbal communication to God. Very nonverbal. A lot of things are nonverbal. And it, it just it just sends a certain feeling to, to heaven. Oh yes. The seed of a camp is a seed you invest in yourself. And you see people. I can come, they say oh, I can come have, have a meeting. I have a what you have you, you know one day I heard a pastor, Ray McCauley, you know. Benny Hinn, came to his church in, Johann, in Johannesburg. And Benny Hinn was preaching. Benny Hinn preached about seven steps to the anointing. It was, a, it was a morning session. Then he got up after. And he said, you pastors, pastors who are pastors of nothing, have nothing. And you see, walking out, you have to go, you see, you have to go here, you have to do this, you have to do that. I mean, he he changed the environment when he was about to pray for the people. The environment changed when he had to use an experience <laughs> to bring the atmosphere back wow. to a certain whatever to pray for the people. Then he said, he made a comment. He said, if you are busy, if you have one thing, he said, I have a thousand things. If you have one thing, to do, I have a thousand things to do. As you see, you are busy, you have to go here. Go but he is standing here talking about seven steps to the anointing. That's why you are nothing about nothing. The seed of a camp. Oh, yes. 
I'm expecting that everybody, all students and everybody, find your way to the camp. Humble yourself. Quietly. Just as God told me, stop arranging pride-filled programs. Just sit there and listen. And after that, go. God promotes people who are humble. And you think it is, maybe I'm talking about people who claim to be busy and so on. Even as children, we feel, and pastors, we feel we know. You feel you know me. You know nothing. You don't know anything. There are many things you don't know. Much you don't know. Because a wise minister, many things you don't know about him. The glory and the beauty, you must cover it. So many things we don't show, we don't see. Because it doesn't help. Are you still there or you are leaving? I hope you are still happy to see me. I don't know whether the atmosphere is changing. <laughs> of the word it's a seed of the word Isaiah 55 the famous verse 11 12 and 13 so shall my word be so shall my word be so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. You know, this scripture is the best scripture if you want to look at the effect of the word of God. It has an effect on people. It has an effect. So shall I, it shall accomplish You know, when we started having camp meetings, I don't know, the the reason why the camp meeting is mostly preaching is more by accident. But after we found out the accident was very good, we maintained the accident. The reason was that because we had the branch, branches, and I wouldn't have much time with them. So I felt that when I see them, what I'll preach for one year, I have to preach everything that I want to preach to them for one whole year in one meeting. So it ended up being long teaching and no prayer. Usually at the camp, we don't pray much. We don't pray. We don't pray. (laughs) Just preaching. Yeah. But... Then I began to see the effect on the people. So shall my word be. So shall my word be that goeth forth. So shall. You can't find somebody who listens to preaching. Like let's say I preach this message and listen to it again and again and again and again. That will not be affected. There's nothing like that. You can actually know people who listen to message and know people who... um, People who listen to messages and people who read, you can know them by talking to them. Oh, yes. How, how do you know? <laughs> One day I was in uh, Takradi and I met with the pastors that were there on a field. I think it was a crusade. I'm not sure. But all the pastors, our own pastors. And I said, you people don't listen to preaching. I mean, after I interacted, I said, you don't listen to preaching, you don't read books. Have you seen me ever going to talk ready for a camp? He that has shall have more. He that hath not, even that which he has shall be taken away. Have you seen me going to talk ready for a camp before? 
when, they fin- when we finished, a brother came to see me. Please, how do you know that we don't listen to messages? Like, do you listen to messages? You don't listen to messages. I know. You can tell. It's non-verbal. It's non-verbal. Become someone who listens to the word. Oh, yes. It changes you. Look at me. I'm in the ministry. My work is the word of God. This is my work. God has given me enough work. I, even to the point I have employees. My employees are lawyers, doctors, blah, 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 plenty. Work from here, Wall Street, whatever. All of them around me. In 100 countries. Oh, yes. Without debt. The word of God is wild. Years ago, when I was in Achimota school, around 1979, somebody came to the system with Kenneth Hagin tapes. And I got some of the tapes. And I listened. One of them was called How to Turn Your Faith Loose. How to Turn Your Faith Loose. What faith is. And I started to listen. Others also had it. <laughs> I mean, I listened and listened and listened and, and listened and listened and listened and listened. And listened. 1978, 1979, I'll say, 19, 1979, 1980, beautiful. 1988, in medical school, this man I've been listening to, uh, something happened to me, and power fell on me. One of the days I was listening to those same old messages which I've been listening to for 10 years. That's why I'm in the ministry. And maybe that's why you are not in the ministry. Number four. A seed of the anointing. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. And set me upon my feet. The spirit entered me. Many people are changed. By the spirit. Not the message. Not the message. Not the word. By the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you have people who say they didn't understand what the, they didn't understand what the preaching was about. But after the camp meeting, they they <laughs> they changed. We've had some testimonies. Are some of those guys here? We've had some people testify. Yeah. I didn't understand what it was. Candle in the dark. I don't know what is candle in the dark. And I agree, candle in the dark is it's a difficult topic. <laughs> Even I have to remember what scripture it is, is about. <laughs> yeah. But the spirit. Oh yes. I remember one brother. He said he was in a service and he just started crying. He didn't know why. And after the service he went to see the pastor. Pray for me. I want to give my life to God. Many people are affected by the spirit. Not the message. Yeah. All through my life, there's something that has puzzled me in the ministry. It is listening to people preaching and I don't understand what they are saying. I don't understand their message. And one day the Holy Spirit told me, listen, you don't necessarily have to understand. That's why people are in churches where the pastor's message is not clear. But they are still in the church. Yes. Sometimes you wonder, what did he say? But the people are happy and they are 
flowing. And they are blessed. Yes. <laughs> that is the difference between a minister who is anointed and a school teacher. A minister who is anointed and a lecturer. It's the spirit. The spirit of God changes you and comes on you when you are in a certain environment. Yes. <laughs> Look for the Holy Spirit. And God is going to change your life. And definitely a place where people have come to you with attention. They are giving attention to you with time. Huh. It will be different. Yeah. Are you still around? You're very quiet. Huh? Is what? Hmm. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 22. Now the hand of the Lord was there upon me. And he said unto me, Arise and go forth into the plain. And I will there talk with thee. I will talk to you there. I'll do what? Why don't you talk to me here? Why don't you just talk to me here? I'm talking of the seed of a camp. That's why my camp meetings, I've always gone somewhere strange. In Kenya, we had, we had a camp in Masai Mara. Then another time, we had a camp in another place. Oh, yes. Before the lockdown, we were going to Alaska. And I, I believe we are still going by the grace. Oh, yes. Many, many different odd places. Arise and go forth into the plain and I will there talk with thee. Look at verse 23. Then I arose and I went forth into the plain and behold the glory of the Lord stood there. You see when he went to the plain the glory of the Lord was there, not here. And as the glory which I saw by the river Cheba and I fell on my face. Look at the next verse. Beautiful. And the spirit entered into me. So anointing came into him when he went there. And the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet and speak with me. Oh, yes. That's why God tells you, go here, go there. That's why sitting at home, online service is not the same as going to church. You are frying eggs. Making jollof, eating chicken whilst you are having church service. Let's be serious. As for me, I'm anointed and I don't. Mind whatever I have to do to be anointed. It's the precious thing to me. It's not my education that makes me preach. It's not my education that makes the church work. God's power has overturned and overcome Orangu after Orangu, rebel after rebel, and has continued to make the church to exist in spite of detractors and in spite of enemies and in spite of all forces and effort to spoil the church. Recently, I was with my pastors in Switzerland. And they told me, do you know that this year is 30 years since you came to Switzerland to start a church? 1992 to 2022. Yeah. For 30 years, and you see the same people, solid and faithful, and their children are bishops. Their children are bishops now. Beautiful. And some are more are becoming bishops. Kalano parabasata la babanda. 
I've had camps on Swiss mountains. Camps in Italy. Camps at different places. Arise and go to the plain and I will speak to you there. I hope you are listening to my preaching. (laughs) Number five. A seed into your ministry. Oh yes. When Elisha decided to spend time with Elijah, he was sowing a seed as a minister into his ministry. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. Number six, a seed of commissioning into the ministry. You'll be commissioned into the ministry. Now, and he said unto me, Son of man, stand on thy feet, and I will speak to thee. And the Spirit entered me, and he spoke to me. Verse 3, Ezekiel 2, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation, that has rebelled against me. He was being commissioned. Oh yes. Recently I met a pastor. I think he's from Kenya. He has got a mega church in Kenya now. Somebody invited him to Ghana. When he came. Give thyself holy. There was no space in the Kodesh. So he, he was at the Adley Chapel throughout. He never entered. <laughs> he never what? Entered the church. No. He was outside in the Adley Chapel. The overflow. Never entered. He told me, he said, I cried. I was crying. He was moved by the Spirit. You should see his church. You should see his church now. He told me recently he has raised over a million dollars to build building his church. Oh yes. <laughs> Commission. One day at a camp meeting, I saw a sister. I told her, I've changed your profession. She was a lawyer. She was a lawyer practicing law in England. It was at a, in fact, as I was talking to her, a judge was calling her. I said, I've changed your profession. She was commissioned. And she entered the ministry. A seed of commissioning. Many are commissioned at camp meetings. Yeah. A camp is not a small thing. No. A camp is not a small program. And so when a camp is being organized, and you come up with cock and bull stories. Say cock and bull. Cock and bull. Put up, uh, find the meaning of a cock and bull story. Put it on the thing. Yeah. Cock and bull stories as to why you cannot be there. Eh? Mean trouble, bluffo. I'm teaching you. God is going to bless you. He's going to commission you. You know, there is a, a man of God that maybe you've heard him, T.L. Osborne. T.L. Osborne. He attended a meeting where Abraham, who was like the greatest prophet, Abraham was preaching. As Abraham was ministering, he heard a voice, you can do this. That, that's all. You can do this. You know, the commission is not like long sentences. My son, my son, my dad. I say this, I say this, all those things. <laughs> Don't worry about long sentences. <laughs> you can do this. You can do this. You'll be hearing those words. You can do this. 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 Can do this. It's a seed of commissioning. Are you listening? Or you are not interested? What is a cock and bull story? 
an unbelievable tale that is intended to deceive, a tall tale. For example, Jack told us some cock and bull story about getting lost. <laughs> so, are you learning the bluffle? All right. Thank you. How many seeds do you have? Seven. A seed of a major prophetic word. Yes. Psalm 105. Verse 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they had with fetters, and he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. Until the time that his word came. Until the time that his word came. Joseph was there until the word came. Then the word of the Lord tried him. That's a different word. His calling tested him, but a word for his release came. So many camp meetings you have a prophetic word. Oh, yes. I learned about bassing at Yongicho. He never said it. He never said And I went there for years. Till one day, I was standing outside his church. And then I saw the buses. And I said, ah, this is an important revelation. But no one ever told me anything. And some other things that I saw. Prophetic guidance comes at camp meetings. The next one. Number what? Number eight. A seed of wisdom. Matthew 7 verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these words of mine and doeth them, huh? I will liken him to what? A wise man. So when you come to camp meetings, you have the opportunity of hearing certain sayings. And I would liken you to being a wise man. One day, somebody, she's not in this church. She belongs to another church. She wrote me a long letter. She's the daughter of a pastor. She said, Dear Bishop, long, long letter. I have come to see since I began to listen to the Makane on the radio and after. There is nothing in this life that you have not thought about or anything that I need to know in my life that is not in the Makane. These are her words. I can read the letter to you. If you listen, that's why you see People listen to the Makane, which is the collection of the camp meetings. So, brothers and sisters, number, you, you get a lot of wisdom by listening and investing a camp in yourself. And of course, you have to listen to it after. Second Timothy 3 and verse 15. What does it say? From a child, thou hast known the Holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise are able to make you what? Foolish. No, they are able to make you wise. You become wise from scriptures. What do you think? Wise. You become wise. You go for a camp, you become wise. How many seeds do you have? Number nine. Beautiful. A seed of prosperity. Oh yes. If you listen to camp meeting, camp messages, you'll be rich. It's not about money, but it makes you rich. Watch and see. That's a mysterious word I'm giving you. Yeah. It'll make you rich. Look at our church. Look at this ministry. People are jealous, are envious. That's why they fight it. 
It's envy that makes people fight. Prosperous, blessed, moving on in realms and dimensions that are difficult to match. You know it. You see it. Where does it come from? Camp. Camp after camp after camp. That is why Satan will not like us to have a camp. And that's why Satan will like us to come as day students. So we'll come in the evening to mark register. Please don't come. Don't come. Make effort. The day student. No, 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 no. Please. Please. Make effort to be there. If you can't, it's okay. You can listen to a message later. And it's not going to be online at all. It's not streaming at all. Oh, yes. Tell your neighbor, a neighbor, based on the message I'm hearing, I don't know what you are thinking about yourself. Musicians. Yeah. Oh, yes. You better be there. You better be there. Because, you see, this is a year of seed time and harvest. It's a year of investing a major seed in your life. It's not about, when we say seed time, you were thinking as about giving money. This is a year for giving money. Giving money. Look at what I'm explaining to you, the seed. That one too is now becoming a problem. Hey. Number 10, a seed for abundant life. I am the door. I am what the door. John chapter 10, verse 9. Any man who enters in shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not to steal, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Anything about life. You are likely to hear it at a camp meeting. True or not true? true. Marriage. Is it not abundant life about ab- marriage? About beloved doses. About everything. Some people break up at camp. Some people get beloved at camps. <laughs> One day, a mother told her daughter, as she was listening to the Makana, she said, I wish I had heard your pastor earlier. I would not have left your father. I would not have left who? I would not have left your father. If I had only heard it earlier. Let's go through the ten seeds. Number one, it's a seed of what? It's a seed. But it's a seed with many seeds. Number one, it's a seed of what? Time. Number two, it's a seed of humility. Number three, is it a seed of humility? Oh, yes. Ask your neighbor, are you humble enough to be at a camp meeting? Oh, yes. To humbly sit down. Yeah. Number three, it's a seed of what? Of the word. Number four, it's a seed of the anointing. Number five, it's a seed into your ministry. Number six, it is a seed of commissioning into your ministry. Oh, yes. Number seven, it's a seed of a major prophetic word. Number eight, it is a seed of wisdom. Ah, you have known the scriptures which are able to make you wise. Number nine, it's a seed of prosperity. And number 10, it's a seed of abundant life. Stand to your feet. All those upstairs, downstairs, everywhere, lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to sow the right seeds. Pray in a moment as we... Father, we are grateful for this opportunity, this great blessing that you give to us. Thanks for your power. Thanks for your word. Thanks for your spirit. Thanks for your grace. The seed of a camp. A camp. On Zandalama, Shamindoleba, Perendolema, Maledere Bele Majama Nomene, Kebrendele Manandala, Halore, Halara, Belire, Soroma, Marande, 
To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. A seed of the word, a seed of wisdom, a seed of the anointing, a seed of commissioning, a seed into your ministry. Seeds from heaven, Mando Kamana, seed of prosperity, seed of abundant living, seed of time. Telling God that I have time for you, I have time for you, and God will have time for you too. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks. Thank you for your blessing for all of us as we serve you with abundance of joy. We give you praise and we give you thanks. Put your hand on your heart and pray, Lord, help me to sow the right seeds in my life in 2022, this year. Let me sow the right seeds in my life. I give you thanks. I give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Thanks a million for all you've done. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, Pastor, please pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Maybe somebody invited you to church. We want to give your heart and your life to God. If you are here like that, lift your right hand up high. I'm going to pray with you. God bless you. Lift it up high. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. All right? I see your hand. You want to be born again? The Bible says, except a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. God bless you. Lift it up high. Father, thank you. Now, if you've lifted your hand, come to me from where you are standing. Come, all the, come from where you are standing all the way to the front right here. All right. God bless you for coming. Lift your hands up. Let me pray with you. Say this prayer. Say, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my heart to you. Close your eyes. I give my heart to you. Lord Jesus, please write my name in the book of life. Thank you for saving me, for healing me, and changing my life. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for saving me today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please go with our pastor who is saying, follow me here. Just go with our pastor this way who is follow me. All right. God bless you. You may be seated. Take your Holy Communion. John chapter 5 and verse 7 there are three that bear record in heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost and there are three that or three forces if you like that bear witness in earth the spirit the water and the blood these forces will fight for you Father as we come before the body of Jesus Christ let there be healing in our lives as we receive this amazing gift. Any 
anyone who is sick receives healing as we will partake of the body of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are sorry for our sins. And we pray for mercy, for salvation, for healing as we partake of the body of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ. One night, my room was invaded by a demon. And I didn't know what to do. And the Holy Spirit told me to take communion. Because in the earth, look at the verse, 1 John 5 and verse 8. It says, in the earth, there are three powers that are working. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And all of them do the same thing. They agree. Lift up your cup. Any force invading your life, any power attacking you, meet the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus defends you from this day onward. Be covered, be protected be delivered the blood of Jesus be forgiven lift your hands for your blessing may the Lord Jesus who was sent to this earth to bless the world may he bless you May the Lord Jesus who was sent to shed his blood, may his blood cover you. The Lord Jesus whose body was broken for you, may his stripes bring you healing. May the Lord answer for you from any claim, any claim made against you by the enemy. Any claim where they say, I know this, you owe this, You can never be free from this. May every claim of the enemy against you and on you be cancelled because of the blood of Jesus. I declare your freedom and your blessing in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated.